This is the Scoop for Tuesday. I'm Josh Holton with the WMNF News Headlines. There was a fire last night at Mosaic Property in Riverview. Hillsborough County Fire Rescue was on the scene of a large brush fire that was rapidly expanding due to high winds. The fire had also spread to high-density polyethylene pipes. Firefighters utilized water tanker shuttles to supply the significant amounts of water needed to fight the fire. There were no injuries to personnel. The fires are under control and there has been no threat to public safety. Hollywood came to Tampa last weekend through the 17th annual Gasparilla International Film Festival. WMNF's Chris Young reports, despite record attendance, getting filmmakers to shoot in Tampa may be a tricky task. Hundreds of people gathered outside of the Tampa Theater for the opening night of the festival on Thursday. It was the world premiere of the film Cash Out, with actor John Travolta joining a Q&A after the screening. Randall Emmett directed the film. I mean, just to see all the fans, uh, you know, coming out for John and... And the rest of the cast, it's, it's exciting. Gasparilla International Film Festival, which spanned four days, saw a record turnout. Ferdian Jap is the marketing and PR director of the festival. It's our biggest class that we've ever experienced at the, at the film festival, attendance-wise, probably since COVID. Jap says filmmakers fall in love with the Tampa Bay area at the event, but often hesitate to shoot here. When they're at the film festival, they're like, oh my God, this place is amazing. You can have the beach, you can have a big city feel, you can have this historical feel with Ebor. You know, we can shoot anything here, a small town, big town, whatever. But, you know, when the language of incentives come up, it's always uh, an issue. Florida is one of only five states without a state film commission office. Currently, Hillsborough and Pinellas County offer some incentive for productions. For WMNF News, I'm Chris Young in Tampa. Florida resident deaths linked to COVID-19 have topped 2,000 this year, according to newly posted data on the State Department of Health website. The data showed that 2,076 reported deaths have been linked to the virus, with 211 in Pinellas and Hillsborough counties. The state in 2023 totaled 8,424 deaths linked to COVID-19, a substantial decrease from the three previous years. Protests will take place at the University of Florida today and tomorrow, while the Florida Board of Governors meets on campus. Faculty members will protest at noon today against Senate Bill 846, a law that prevents state universities and colleges from hiring people from, quote, countries of concern, including China, Russia, Cuba, Iran, North Korea, Syria, and Venezuela. Adrienne Reutberg is a professor of chemistry at UF. He says not being able to offer spots to qualified applicants because of their country of origin is difficult. We basically have to take really good students and not make them offers anymore. And that's potentially crippling to, to, the, to, to the mission. Even if, even if this changes tomorrow, students are not going to apply in the future, right? Or it's going to take a long time to regain our reputation. Professor Reutberg says the law sends an uncomfortable message to students and faculty members with ties to countries of concern who've been at UF before the law came into place. The message you're getting, honestly, is we don't like your kind. You just happen to be here before we close the door, so you can stay. But it's literally, we don't like your kind here. Protests against the university's recent cuts to diversity, equity, and inclusion will start at 9 a.m. tomorrow. The Board of Governors is meeting tomorrow to discuss a replacement for sociology as a core course. Education reporter Danielle Pryor explains. The group which oversees the state's public universities will vote on replacing sociology with an American history course as a general education core course option. Along with these changes, the board will also vote on whether to continue to allow incoming freshmen to use the citizenship test to fulfill the civic literacy requirement. Hope Community Center's director, Felicia, Felipe Sosa Lazabale says not allowing students to use the citizenship test adds new barriers to first generation college students. I want to question the reasons, the true reasons why they're including an extra burden and an extra step for people who want to simply get a college education. Uh, and the citizenship test right now is very comprehensive. If approved, incoming students could use a passing score on the AP Gov, AP History, CLEP, American Government, or Florida Civic Literacy exams to meet the requirement. In Orlando, I'm Danielle Pryor. The weather today in the Tampa Bay area will have a few clouds overhead. Highs today in the upper 80s. Overnight lows around 70. I'm Josh Holton with the WMNF News Headlines. This is The Scoop, recorded at WMNF Tampa.